Welcome to MSP lecture series on main group chemistry. Uh, so, let me begin today's lecture with uh, uh, discussion on aluminum hydrides. In my previous lecture, I was discussing about boron hydrides and their preparation and their utility in organic synthesis. So, let me now start discussion on aluminum hydrides. Uh, aluminum hydride can be prepared by reacting aluminum trichloride with uh, lithium aluminum hydride in ether. So, how that happens? So, AlCl3 plus lithium aluminum hydride it gives so this is how one can make conveniently aluminum hydride okay or one can also call it as aluminum okay so however the formation of etherite complexes because of electron deficiency complicates the synthesis okay so uh, these compounds are highly unstable okay so above 423 kelvin okay so these are unstable with respect to decomposition to give the corresponding element that is aluminum and hydrogen and since these are thermally unstable so, one can think of exploiting their property in generating thin films of aluminum. Uh, this is where uh, utility of these things comes. In fact, volatile P block elements have been used in, in generating thin films. Aluminum hydride reacts with Lewis bases very similar to boron hydride to form the corresponding adducts. For example, let us take uh, Uh, lithium aluminum hydride and treat this one with AlCl3 and So, here uh, this is another way of making it and then stabilizing the mass adducts. For example, take uh, uh, lithium aluminum hydride and treat that one with aluminum chloride in presence of uh, soft base such as uh, trithalamine. It gives an adduct of AlH3 uh, and LiCl will be precipitating out. So of course, this reaction can be carried out uh, in a organic solvent such as ether. Now, let us look into some reactions of lithium aluminum hydride with organic compounds. Okay. So, lithium aluminum hydride. Okay. So, take this one, okay. treat this one with okay. halogen alkane or alkyl halide, it gives RH. Okay. And one can also treat this one with an aldehyde. Okay. So, this gives RCH2OH. Okay. One can also treat this one with a ketone. So, it gives secondary, this is primary alcohol So, in this case what we get is a secondary alcohol R2 R R R CH2 CHOH secondary alcohol we get it and instead if we take an acid
it gives again a primary alcohol okay and if you say take an acid chloride acid chloride it gives again primary alcohol okay if we take an amide one can get a primary amine treat this one with an azide organic azide rn3 it gives amine if you treat with a nitril such as acetone nitrile or benzo nitrile it gives primary amine okay if it is treated with hydrogen peroxide hydro peroxide okay it gives alcohol if you treat with a peroxide this is hydro peroxide and this is peroxide it will give again alcohol okay so these are few uh, reactions and you can see uh, how effectively one can use uh, for a variety of organic transformations okay uh, and of course uh, one can also uh, do reactions such as this one for example uh, sicl4 when it's treated with lithium aluminum hydride it gives the silane sih4 okay and similarly pcl3 lithium aluminum hydride gives ph3 okay and one can also tetramethyl zinc two minus if it is treated with lithium aluminum hydride it can give very uh, unstable species of course this is very unstable nevertheless one can make tetrahydrozincate can be made and it can also reduce metals for example agcl when it's treated with lithium aluminum hydride okay it gives silver okay so these are some of the reactions where you can find uh, the utility of lithium aluminum hydride okay so let's look into digalene okay the simplest uh, gallium hydride is digalene digalene is nothing but ga2h6 okay and this is prepared starting from gallium trichloride okay and the product condenses at low temperature as a white solid but decomposes about 253 kelvin so one can conveniently prepare starting from gallium trichloride treating this one with trimethylsilane as a okay as a source of uh, hydride ions of course uh, and the structure of this one is similar to ethane initially what we get is this one something like this and this one on further treatment with lithium gallium hydride okay at 240 kelvin 
it gives okay so this is how one can make uh, digalen one can expect uh, reactions of digalen very similar to diborane only thing one should remember is uh, all reactions of digalen must be carried out at low temperature since it decomposes above 253 kelvin uh, to give gallium and dihydrogen okay whatever the reactions i had described in case of diborane can be carried out using digalen provided we maintain the temperature below 253 kelvin now let us look into uh, uh, oxides uh, oxo acids oxo anions and hydroxides of uh, group 13 elements within the p block basic character increases down a group this is true uh, with most of the groups as well thus boron oxides are exclusively acidic but when you go for heavier ones of course aluminum is amphoteric and gallium also to an extent amphoteric whereas indium and thallium oxides are exclusively basic and thallium oxide thallium 1 oxide is soluble in water and the resulting hydroxide is a strong base and its basicity can be compared to potassium hydroxide so boron forms b2o3 and also several polyborates and also borosilicate glasses borosilicate glasses are uh, uh, very important in um, glass industry boron oxide b2o3 is acidic and is prepared by dehydration of boric acid okay so alkali metal and alkaline earth metal oxides are basic whereas p block oxides are acidic okay and uh, boron oxide is no exception yeah. and one can prepare uh, boron oxide by simply performing dehydration of boric acid for example 2BOH thrice solid on heating it gives B2O3 plus 3H2O okay the principal oxide of boron is B2O3 and it is obtained by dehydration of boric acid at red heat so that's what i showed you so water is taken up slowly by b2o2 giving back boh thrice that is called orthoboric or boric acid boh thrice is also called orthoboric acid or simply it can be called as boric acid but above 1270 kelvin molten b2o2 reacts rapidly with steam to give uh, reacts rapidly with steam to give so this is called metaboric acid and of course uh, when we look into the property uh, boric acid is a very weak brown red acid in aqueous solution in fact boric acid primarily a weak lewis acid and the complex it forms with H2O essentially is uh, uh, looks this way. Okay. So, <clears throat> and this is the actual source of proton comes here. So, we can, we can see this one from this reaction. proton so pka for this one is 9.2 okay uh, as is typical of many of the lighter elements of p block there is a tendency for the anion to polymerize by condensation with the loss of water thus in concentrated neutral or basic solution equilibrium 
uh, the one I am going to show will exist for example, Okay, some oxides uh, of boron uh, are shown in this slide, you can see here. Uh, so, B3, O3, OH uh, thrice will be something like this and also uh, B3, O3, OH four times will be having some something like the cyclic structure okay. and of course, through hydrogen burning interaction it can have a two dimensional sheet like structure. Sodium perborate. So, another uh, uh, interesting molecule. Uh, so, this is uh, NaBO3 4H2O. This is NaBO3 4H2O. So, this is used as a bleach in laundry powders automatic dishwash powders and also whitening toothpaste. So, although the formula is often given as NaBO3 4H2O, the compound contains the peroxide anion O2 2 minus. So, and is more accurately described in this way. So, it is appropriate to describe in this way instead of showing uh, as it is solvated with 4 equivalents of water. So, one should conveniently uh, precisely write in this way. Na2, B2, O2, this we have two peroxides, OH. So, this is where it, its utility comes as a bleach plus 6H. Okay. The correct description of sodium perborate is this one. The compound is preferred to hydrogen peroxide in many applications because it is more stable and liberates oxygen only at elevated temperature. So, oxidental uh, spillage does not leads to any complications that we come across with respect to uh, hydrogen peroxide especially when it is stored in larger quantities. From that point of view, uh, this sodium perborate is preferred over hydrogen peroxide. So, in this slide I have shown some of the uh, boron oxide and hydroxide uh, peroxides and all those things you can see here. Okay. Now, let us look into uh, the oxides of aluminum. Uh, aluminum oxides occur in mainly two forms, one is alpha alumina that is also called corundum and also gamma alumina that is called activated alumina. The alpha form is made by dehydrating aluminum hydroxide or aluminum oxyhydroxide at 1300 K, while dehydration of gamma uh, aluminum oxyhydroxide below 720 Kelvin gives uh, gamma or activated alumina. Uh, the amphoteric nature of alumina and uh, trihydroxy aluminum can be illustrated in the formation of aluminate when ALOH thrice or aluminum hydroxide is dissolved in an excess of alkali. So, I can I will show you I will write down all the equations for you. Okay. So, these reactions I am going to write essentially depict the amphoteric nature of uh, oxides of aluminum.
same reaction but with H plus that is acidic condition. It gives hexaqua aluminum compound ok. Similarly, aluminum hydroxide if we treated with base it gives soluble aluminum hydroxide or aluminate. Similarly, if it is treated with Some of these reactions simply show the amphoteric nature of aluminum oxide and as well as aluminum hydroxide. Now, let us look into the oxides of gallium, indium and thallium. So, uh, gallium if you see gallium like aluminum forms more than one polymorphs of uh, uh, oxides for example, Ga2O3 is known and Ga gallium oxyhydroxide is known and also gallium hydroxide very similar to aluminum and the compounds are again amphoteric very similar to aluminum analogous aluminum compounds. Indium oxide, indium oxyhydroxide and indium hydroxide are essentially basic in nature and thallium 3 compounds of course, you should remember thallium forms both thallium 1 compound and as well as thallium uh, 3 compounds ok. So, thallium three forms the oxide Tl2O3 ok, but no simple hydroxide is known for that one and this thallium oxide is insoluble in water and decomposes in under acidic condition or in acidic medium it decomposes. Thallium oxide on treatment with water it gives thallium hydroxide, thallium 1 hydroxide. So, in concentrated sodium hydroxide solution and in the presence of barium hydroxide the hydrated oxide forms ok. So, hydrated oxide of thallium O2, thallium oxide forms a, a complex of this type. So, that means essentially Tl2O3 ok. So, plus barium hydroxide in sodium hydroxide gives a complex ion of this type Ba2 TiOH 6 times OH ok. So, in the solid state uh, uh, this uh, anion trianion ok is connected to barium 2 atoms and OH minus ions to give a structure that is related to that of K2PTCl6 potassium hexachloroplatinate. So, I have shown here uh, ok. Uh, so, just I will show you in uh, the next one how they are connected. For example, here you can see this is the hexahydroxy uh, thalate. Uh, thaliate. So, here you can see uh, all OH groups are octahedrally disposed here. Uh, this is taken from this paper here I have cited here. And of course, here you can see the coordination sphere of thallium and how uh, these uh, 6 uh, hydroxy groups are surrounding and, and again each uh, hydroxy group lone pair this ok is interacting with barium I have shown barium here. Okay, one of them I have labeled and this oxygen. This is the uh, monomeric unit okay, and then this is how in the lattice it looks like and this structure is very similar to uh, potassium hexachloroplatinate here. Okay. So, uh, lastly before I conclude my talk let me uh, show you about borides. So, when boron is heated with most metals Okay, metal borides are formed similar to the carbides or 
silly sides or hydrates we come across respectively they reaction with uh, carbon, uh, silicon or hydrogen. The structure of these borehydrates are dependent on the metal to boron ratio and contain single pairs, chains, double chains, sheets or cluster of boron atoms. So, compounds with composition M 2 B uh, we come across ok, composition with M 2 B ok, for example, F E 2 B have single boron atoms we, with those of F E B we have ok, uh, here single boron atom and here in this case the ratio is 1, 1 is to 1 mm, and and here in this case basically what happens we have a single chain of boron atoms running through the metal lattice ok. So, in MB2 we also have another uh, type of boride that is called MB2. So, in this one uh, what happens material has a sheet structure that means one borane layer is there and above and below metals are there it continues alternate arrangement of boron as well as metal uh, sheets ok. So, example Mg B 2 ok or titanium B 2 ok. So, we also have another one uh, boride having composition 1 is to 6. So, for example, magnesium is there. So, there are clusters of 6 boron atoms arranged in an octahedral fashion ok within the cube of a metal atom in a typical C S C L type structure that is the F C C structure in M B 12 ok another the last one. Uh, we have M B 12 in this one ok for example, aluminum. So, in this one basically what happens uh, we have an icosahedral B 12 clusters surrounded by aluminum uh, in the lattice ok. So, I will try to show you some of them here you can see here a uh, single chain running uh, ok here oh, where the ratio is 1 is to 1 and, and here a uh, ratio is 1 is to 2 here. So, between two sheets of metal one boron sheet is there ok and here again example is zirconium boride you can clearly see between the two layers of metal this boron sheet is there ok and, and here uh, where uh, the ratio is 1 is to 6 you can see it typically in a cubane at the center ok uh, uh, boron cluster is there in which 6 boron atoms are essentially disposed towards 6 corners of an octahedron. So, their arrangement is octahedron and also one can also see similar one where icosahedron will be there in case of a, a M B 12 boron hydrate. So, let me stop here in my next lecture I will be discussing about the halides of group 13 elements. So, uh, thank you very much and have a present reading of inorganic chemistry until I return uh, with my next lecture. Thank you very much.